Machine Masters family. This is MG the Future, bringing you another exclusive tutorial to the Machine Masters. Today, as you can see, I'll be diving into the NOAA 40 sound right in time for fall and winter. It's getting a lot colder. Um, a lot of R&B is going to be released. Drake is probably overdue for an album, and it's going to be a good time, um, especially for these particular techniques. It's not just the Drake or Toronto sound that I'll be covering today. And it's not going to be limited just to the filter per se, but um, I had a question from someone who wanted me to break down how did I personally achieve that sound. Um, in the video itself, you're probably going to hear an example of one of my productions that I'm going to add to the video after this video, but here's what he said. He said, hey bro, I found one of your beats on a forum. I've been trying to make something like the 40 style. I was just wondering if you mind helping me understand how you did it. Was there a sample? Also, how did you get the filter to sound like 40s? Um, ironically enough, he's referring to this. This particular example is a Bootsy Collins replay. Uh, using all Omnisphere instruments about seven years ago. He's talking about this part where it sounds like it's underwater being filtered. That's pretty much it, real simple. No, no instruments changed or harmed. We added a different synthesizer back then on that part, but the rest of it's still in it. And what's ironic about getting that email two days ago is that this guy behind me shows up two days ago. This is the infamous Tommy D himself um, he's my uh, partner in crime, uh, on again, off again, co-producer that I've met probably in 2005. Um, and it's not very often you get someone who's a master of their craft, in his case, the keyboard. So I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to show you guys how we work together and the dynamics of doing tracks like that, as from that example from years ago. So we'll get started on that without much further ado. But I want to show you guys or bring to your attention, you guys, some things about the NOAA 40 sound, so to speak. Um, first, he has his video on machine.com you can check out or nativeinstruments.com you can check out. He goes into depth on how he does it. This is very recent. Seven years ago, I, I was not privy to how he did it. So I didn't use these techniques, but I'll show them to you today. About seven years ago, this was out. Sound on Sound magazine article about it. And he kind of danced around it. You know, he didn't want to let the cat out the bag. But the most important part of this article is right here. One of his main keyboard parts in the song was added by 40 using expand instrument and Pro Tools, right through a Waves guitar amp simulator, and then the inevitable lo fi plugin. What is inevitable? Inevitable means that this plugin is the go to plugin for most Pro Tools users, no matter what kind of sound or style of music they're doing. Um, this is an example of it, but it's been updated since by Air Instruments. Air Instruments also makes Expand and they sell all their instruments and all their FX as of now outside of Pro Tools. So you guys can Google that and download those plugins and buy those if you want. <clears throat> Today with all the new tools we've had since then, it's not really necessary, but if you want to quote unquote authenticate the sound, that'd be the best way to do it. And basically all lo-fi is, it's a down rate or down sampling emulation. And as you can see the controls here, um, sample rate, aliasing, sample size, etc., etc. A lot of things that are built into the machine which we'll be using today. Um, since the advent of this article in that video, of course, people have been sound designing with these techniques already in mind. Look no more further than the 46 expansion for machine, which comes bundled with some straight ahead uh, quote unquote Toronto style instruments, which I've done a demo for already, which you can hear here as well. And you can also watch me as I go through my demo, one of the first videos I've done for Machine Masters. But this video that I'm doing today is gonna to be much different. We're gonna give you something different as far as style goes because it's not limited to Drake. I mean, you got Alicia Keys, Jasmine Sullivan, Usher, everyone has been running with this style and still do to this day. And then of course, if you guys aren't using machine and you're some of my Ableton Live people, if you have access to complete or contact, you definitely check out LE Hits, the contact library. 
I'm probably going to open that up during this session and Evoxa as well for the vocal chops because not only are people quote unquote filtering out everything, they're adding vocals and we'll get into that as well. And if you haven't seen it already and you're a subscriber, check out the OVO sound course because a lot of the techniques um, specific to Drake, I would say, are covered in this course that I did a few months ago. So without wasting too much time, we're gonna get straight to work. This is a behind the scenes workflow of how easy it is when you put two people together who are masters of their craft um, and respect, respectively so. Him being, uh, how long have you been playing keyboard? All my life. How many years? Um, mm, I would say about 17 years. He's been playing keyboard for 17 years. I've been making beats, <laughs> shit, going on 17 years. <laughs> 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 it was about to be 2017, so yeah. So this is what a decade plus of practice uh, manifests itself as. So let's get to it. So in this particular project, I'm using drum synth. Drum synth comes with the machine, of course. And basically, I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. You create your own sounds with it. And they, some of these sounds leave much to be desired, which is fine, but that's what all the post-processing is about. And as you can see in the examples of the presets I pulled, they're adding saturators and limiters. So it's that kind of thing. Um, next, I have a hi-hat loop I pre-cut. Basically, it's a simple straight-ahead loop. like that and that's from the mg super south kit you get if you purchase the ovo sound course pad sounds we have the different kits that came from the 46 expansion the minus lead the drone and that's the main ingredients that i wanted to show you guys is that for most of those tracks especially in the r b realm it's a pad it's a drone low synth low pad low bass sound and then it's drums and sometimes there's 808s tucked underneath. So we're going to try to put something together real quick. I'm going to let Tommy do work on the pads first um, along to a metronome click. So I think we're going for the two chords, correct? Yep. Okay, let's do it. So as you can already hear, this particular patch from the 46 expansion almost automatically puts you into that mood already. Um, the pre-processing that went into the sound design um, already gets you there. But this is only part of the battle. We're going to continue from here. What I want to do first, though, is go ahead and apply this hi-hat loop to follow along. So this way, we can just turn the metronome off. Now, I like these style of hats, especially hat loops. I've went into this in great detail in previous videos, but they're a live human element and they give you a really ambient feel, especially if you throw a light delay or some kind of reverb on them. And I might do that later. So now I'm going to try to put a real simple dice pineapples type of rhythm over it. So at this part, we're probably going to add 
a drone to it. And basically the drone is that low pad note, the low bass note, or in some cases, especially in Massive, if you guys use Serum and Massive, you'll hear a lot of these style of sounds and out of the 46 expansion, it's called City Lights. Um, it, I don't believe from a sound design angle, it was meant to be the sound, but we're gonna substitute it and use it as that low bass sound. It just has that crunch at the bottom of the chords. Usually it's a little bit more sustained but we just want to crunch because we can always put a sub on it. In fact, let's see if we can find a nice sub that will complement that kick anyway. There we go. So that's the beauty of the 46 expansion when it comes to approaching R&B or this genre. I'll call it a genre because it really is. It's not limited to Toronto anymore. And before that, you know, Pete Rock and a lot of the hip hop cats were filtering samples all the time back then anyway. So who do we really trace it to? But in today's modern R&B context, as you can see with having the correct sound design and the right patches right off gate, it helps you get directly into the mood. So I know a lot of people um, pride themselves on sound designing and pride themselves on not using construction kits, but sometimes you just need these sounds to accomplish a very specific task. And that's why I like this particular kit for this. Um, we'll probably add a minus lead, which is from T minus. T minus and Boy Wonder kind of started in the game with Drake um, together. But for whatever reason, I think around 2009 or so, maybe 10, T-minus uh, got out of production altogether. But um, his, this iconic lead sound is definitely one of his signature trademarks once his sound caught on. Something like that. So that's what we got. Around a few minutes or so. Of course, we can spread it out or track it out and come up with a custom arrangement um, within Logic or Ableton Live, depending on what your vice is. But that's it for that particular um, style of sound. And um, there's not a lot to it. <laughs> it's really R&B chords from the early 2000s, early 90s, or those style of chords, I should say. Um, especially Tender Love, Force MDs. You'll hear a lot of those chords and variations, and a lot of Chris Brown that used in this style. Um, Drum-wise, is very sp sparse. Um, but you can add the bigger trap snares. I know on the Machine Master site, um, the Sound Oracle, the Anomaly drums, the Sound Oracle packs one through three, he has all the go-to drums um, available for this style. And of course, we got the Trapped in Love kits up there as well. So definitely check those out. Um, but 
one other thing I wanted to show you guys, and I might get to some other stuff too, is that we put together a very small MIDI loop package for you guys earlier today. And we'll probably make this available on machinemasters.com. But I want to take you through it <clears throat> because not everyone has the privilege <laughs> of having a keyboard master at their disposal um, on a Sunday. So <laughs> we're going to go through these. Uh, think of them as just construction kits, right? These are just starting points for you being able to make this style of music for yourself. You can analyze the core data, kind of get an idea of how to put things together like this. And of course, the whole idea is to inspire you to build around it. And these particular examples, I'm probably going to switch the instrument out, but these are massive sounds. But So without talking to you guys, heads off too much, I'm going to go through all of them, all eight, and I'm just going to play them. Basically, it's a pad and a drone, so it's going to be the pad and drone MIDI pack for you guys. And the drums is just a placeholder. So those are pretty cool. So it's eight patterns all together, both with a pad and the bass line or drone line, as I like to identify it as, because it's not truly bass, so to speak. Um, and you can add your own drums, add your own leads, bells, melodies, T minus leads, whistles, sine waves, whatever it is that you guys decide to do. We just want to make that available to you guys to inspire you. And I'm pretty sure eight's more than enough to put a package together for any aspiring rapper or singer at least within the next moments, few moments that we have for this winter. Um, so the last part of this video, I want to show you guys if you don't have the patches. So, let, so let's imagine a world where you don't have access to the 46 expansion or the particular set of massive sounds that I have. And you're kind of just a, a Ableton Live user even. You know what I mean? So I'm going to start a new project. And we're going to use contact and you don't have to use contact but i want to check out that le kit and see what we can put together so i can show you the other technique as far as getting your instruments or your your sounds to sound that way like they're quote unquote underwater Get some chords going. Uh, that's a little too rough. Yeah, something like that. It's still kind of bright. And it has a lot of edge on it, but that's fine, especially for the next technique. Yeah, something like that.
So pretty much from here, that's it for this particular technique. What I really want to do is use this as audio. You can split the audio up, of course, if that's what you like to do, like track by track or sound by sound. But I'm just going to do it as one loop for the sake of the demonstration on how to get the, that lo-fi fidelity sound, especially if you don't have lo-fi yet. So we make sure it's a loop. We do master output instead of sound output. Um, if you're doing this for a full track and you want to arrange it in something else, so just go ahead and commit it to sound output. I'm going to go ahead and save it to the desktop. I'm just using Logic for this because it has the output options that I need. And I want you to check out the spectrum here. So what people were doing before Noah made it more apparent of what his technique was, they were using a low pass filter or a high cut filter. And basically all you would do is something like this. Run it back to about six, like it was in Acid Martin music, three, or it is commonly, or one. And you'll hear um, one K being a, a notch filter on tracks like NBA with Joe Button. And then you just play it back. And for the most part, you can get away with just that. But as the man said, that's not what he's doing. So what he's actually doing is, is just saving it. So we're going to bounce that selection, make it a PCM wave, just wave format or WAV, depending on how your DAW phrases it. Resolution, you can do 8-bit if you want it to. I'm going to use 16, but sample rate, I'm going to choose the lowest. I'm going to hit OK. Yes if I'm lucky. Oh, so I'm lucky. I actually played it back this time. Normally your DAW, especially Pro Tools, back in the day when we were doing this, it'll give you an error about your project not being the same as the import file. So what you would do is convert it using something like Audio Human Converter basically what I do is I take it or actually maybe I took the wrong file let me check something there we go yeah you take it in here convert it to mp3 or WAV file there we go that's the one I want the underwater one I'm gonna convert it to an mp3 I'm going to bring it back in. And remember, we're already degrading the audio by using this technique. It's emulating what a SP-1200 would do. And your DAW will read MP3 just fine. And if we pair that technique with this, we're underwater, for real. But I wanted you to see something that, with even without this filter, it's already cut itself because of what we did with saving it at a lower fidelity. And it's more profound when you're using musical content that has a lot of highs in it. Um, they'll get muffled out a bit. So if you're using like a mallets or bells, especially bells, if you're using a melody that has a lot of bells in it, use this technique and it gives this really warm sounding effect. Throw it in the machine again. slice it up. Make sure you set the tempo back to the original. Probably a lead or something. Cool. <laughs> That's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to show you guys. 
as far as this particular style goes, as far as putting these kind of beats together, um, it's all about having the correct resources, the correct sounds, and of course, um, having a good idea as far as the kind of chords you want to use. And um, thanks to people like this guy <laughs> and others, just putting R&B chords or even samples of R&B, like 90s R&B tracks, catching those chords on a bridge, looping them up, throwing them underwater, so to speak, and um, putting your own spin on them. And of course, you can combine this technique um, with sampled bass production too. Um, just getting that filtered sound for grimy hip hop beats is really dope. Um, LS, uh Tribe Called Quest and Pete Rock and those guys. So hopefully you guys take something away from this. Um, and for you, those of you who pick up the MIDI pack, I would love to hear what you guys do with it. So definitely hit us up on um, Instagram or tag us in those projects if you make some out of it. Um, I'm at MG the Future. And what is your Instagram right now? That's I go. Um, P-S-Y-B-U-O. Um, and I'll probably put that in the video so you guys can see that and check him out and what he's been doing. But um, again, thank you for tuning in to the Machine Masters. Hopefully you guys learned something. Until next time.